potentially are going live on Facebook now. Um, so you can still talk. It's no worries. And I'm also, I think, going to let everybody in. Okay. This, Go this for it. literally, this literally is when the entirety of this thing crashes. Because, uh, I, as I said, I've already had, um, I've already had two computer crashes this morning, and suddenly we're going to get a boom of people, and then my computer is going to blow up. It's going to blow up, and I'm going to be setting on fire, but I will still be conducting. Did it, dear? Uh, Karen, could you press record for me, please? Awesome. <coughs> yes, it is actually streaming on Facebook as we speak. We're live on the Facebook members page. That's what you get when I buy a premium account as we attempt to do that. So we may even struggle to fit everyone in. But we'll see. We will do our best to fit everyone in. And if not, they can watch it on the Facebook members page. It's almost like we planned this. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like we've planned it. Mm. Ah. Morning, Simon. Morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good we shall morning. get going in a Good second. Morning. Good morning. If you haven't already, you'll need, if you have got some scores printed out, that is marvellous. If you have not got scores printed out, well, that's for shame on you, people. Um, you'll also need a pencil. Um, we never write on scores in pen, uh, mainly because I am, um, I was going to say flexible. That's not the case. I'm very inflexible. Uh, but it may be that I change my mind on things or music team decide to change the entirety of the breath plan of a song. Uh, I'm hoping that won't happen. Um, but you want a pencil, never write on a score with a pen. I got told off when I was at college doing that, so uh, not allowed to do that, especially considering it wasn't a photocopy. It was an original score that I wrote on with a red biro. So Ooh. there we go. And I, then I found out I was supposed to give it back, but I was like, whoops, there you go. Um, make sure also, if you have got a pair of headphones that you can plug into your device to be listening to things, it is not a requirement it will make things a lot easier to hear especially when we get to silent night because the guide tracks in silent night are stereo panned so if you're only listening through like laptop speakers you'll still be able to hear it fine but it just won't be as useful because <laughs> you won't quite be able to hear it in the same way okay uh, so we'll just give it a minute or two and then we will get going there are digital scores um, and if somebody um, can put the links in the chat that would be marvelous uh someone on the music anyone on the music team just put in like the in the bleak midwinter and silent night uh, OneDrive links that were on the music team page would be fab i don't want to try and open too many facebook um windows on my computer at the moment in case it decides to give up the ghost and uh and uh jump off a cliff so to speak just letting a couple of other people in Oh, that coffee went down the wrong way. <coughs> right. I am just going to quickly check that we are actually on live on the members page. I just listened to myself cough. <coughs> right. I am just going to quickly check that we are actually. On Hello, Simon live from the past. On the members page. Wow, that, that's it's like Inception. I'm talking to myself in the past and kind of in myself in the future. Woo, mind blown, folks, mind blown. Um, anyone in music team got that link yet? No. Okay, pop it in there in a second if you can. Fan dabby dozy. I'm quite excited, by the way. Maybe because I've had about three pints of strong black coffee so far because I've run out of milk in the house. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we're having to self-isolate, so I can't currently leave my house. And I'm quickly running out of all liquid product. I think at some point I'll be you, putting... Simon, like... you know I live like 30 seconds from you and could drop your milk round, don't you? But that's 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 putting on other people, Julia, and I don't like to yeah, put on other people. It's not putting on in the slightest. Would you like me to bring you some milk? Um, that would be useful later on because I, I was I, I'm getting to the point where fabric conditioner looks like milk, so I thought it probably would make my coffee potentially go the kind of same colour, and then I'll have kind of like jasmine and and lily 
flavoured coffee, which might be a taste sensation. Send me a list and I'll pop to the shop. <laughs> We're shopping. We forgot eggs, so I'm popping to the shop anyway. So let me know what oh, you need and oh, I'll get it. Thank you very you. much, me love. That would be marvellous because no I'm worries. banned from leaving the building. At least it'd be smooth and, and comfy. Exactly. It'll be smooth and <laughs> silky. It'll out. be like the world's best latte. It's like the smoothest latte ever because you just poured in fabric conditioner. But they... <laughs> no, never mind milk. I've ran out of tequila. Oh, Walter, that's not bad. Well, I've got a bit of whiskey, mate, but you're a little bit far away in Scotland. I'm not, I think if I'm banned from leaving the house to go to the shop, I can't go to Scotland to, to see you, mate. So, Right, we're going to get going, I think, folks. Now, there's a little bit of... Um, <coughs> well, I'm not going to use the word etiquette because obviously I don't have any of that. Um, but there is a, a, a couple of things. We, this is um, slightly different than a standard session because it's a launch session so we're not going to be in this session going into breakout rooms uh we're really going to be launching in the bleak midwinter and silent night which are our two main songs um so yeah so that it's kind of slightly different if you have um if we can there'll be a section at the end probably after we've stopped recording the session because we're recording this so that anybody who wants to attend uh, watch it after the fact can watch it after the fact so what we want to do is we'll have a section at the end where we'll do some questions we may even pop you we may even like have questions and if you want to go in breakout rooms or whatever we could even do that but i think we'll just leave questions till the like the very end of what we're doing this morning if that's okay with everyone so if we do have like a really important question that is something that is specific at that point just pop your hand up and any of the music team because there's 67 of you currently in the room um the music team will therefore be able to kind of hopefully keep an eye on that and let me know that you have a question uh but i'm kind of wanting to kind of go through stuff run through things you are going to get a decent chance to listen to parts go through scores um kind of kind of have an idea about where we're going with both these two main songs we've got five songs but only two of them are collective only okay in the Bleak Midwinter, Silent Night are collective songs. And then the other three songs, the Christmas song, Oh Man, You Miss... When I say the Christmas song, I mean chestnuts roasting on an open fire. But that I'm not saying that every single time. Because, you know, I can also... Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Even if you do, like, the whole one letter per word, it's still far too long and I'd end up doing it wrong. So, the Christmas song. Um, oh Man, You Mysterium. Happy Christmas War is Over. Those three songs are joint songs that all the various um, all the various groups who are in this uh, concert. So that is Tuxedo Junction, Men's Barbershop Chorus, Looks A Cappella Mixed, Barbersh Mixed A Cappella Chorus. Uh, we've got the Night and Community Choir. We've got the Simple Tones. We've got the Locksmiths. We potentially have another group as well, but I need to get confirmation on that. Uh, Collective Youth Chorus. We've got all these groups who are learning those three joint songs songs so this session today is just in the bleak midwinter silent night you can obviously all of you learn all five of those songs if you're really wanting it and obviously we'll chat a little bit later about the different languages in silent night um but again those things are coming and if any of you are here who have offered to do sessions in those various languages looks like we've picked up portuguese overnight and possibly a hawaiian chorus uh, may well be doing um something i don't what 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 language do people speak in Hawaii? Could anyone just tell me that quickly? It's not Hawaiianese, because that is just definitely not a language. Anyone know what Hawaiian. people in ha Hawaiian. Hawaiian? Hawaiian, is that a language? Yes. I, I wasn't sure, because you know, I was like, Hawaiianese definitely is not it. That definitely is just, I made that one up. And I was like, is it Hawaiian or is it like a... I didn't know what the language was, so thank you for letting me know. Um, but yes, yeah, so it will be fun if to, to learn something in Hawaiian, because I can't currently do anything in Hawaiian. Not I surprisingly. Quite a few Americans. Sorry, what's that? I heard something, then it disappeared. Okay, I'll carry on. Now I'm oh, now going to welcome. share. Oh, I heard something else. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, huh, I can hear things around my head and then it disappears. Okay, so we are going to, um, we will get going, folks. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome to this launch event for In the Bleak Midwinter and Silent Night. Uh, we are going to run through these. Uh, if you've got your scores and a pencil, that would be useful. Um, we will have a run through the song and then I'll track back and go through some things. So this first run through, I'm just going to um, go on to my PowerPoint presentation. Now, I have to be honest here, yesterday when I was doing a meeting with the music team, um, 
to go through this. Um, my, when I screen shared, it uh, basically the entirety of Zoom crashed for me. Now, I have already set someone up as a co-host. If it does that, I'll just pop back in and try again. So just forgive me if that's the case. Um, sometimes my computer doesn't like me. Possibly lots of the time it doesn't like me. Okay, I'm going to press the share button now. Hopefully, Zoom does not crash for me. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Excellent. It looks like you can see my screen. That is superb. Okay, so uh, make sure you've got your scores to hand. Um, if people in music team do just keep an eye, those who I've made co-hosts, I think it's Karen and Laura from the moment, just let people in as they are. That's marvellous. And yeah, let's have a little go through. Now, this is with the score. You will notice that there is some markup parts on the score. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's give it an initial listen through. Feel free to have a little sing. You're on mute anyway. And then we'll start picking through the song. Here we go. He says. You all hear that? Excellent. I'll try not to sing along. It might put you off. I've not got an alto voice this morning yet. Red lines are breath points, just in case you were wondering. Two, three, four.
good stuff. Okay, so I'm just I'm still going to keep on my um, uh, screen here, but I'm just going to track back slightly and just give you a little bit of a chat. Now, don't worry; these annotations are already in the score folder uh, on in the bleak midwinter. These exact slides. Okay. Um, what I would like some of you then to do is, once you've looked at those slides, and they're called score annotation, that's what the document is called in the In the Bleak Midwinter score folder that you've all hopefully got access to. The link was that uh, was put out there by Laura. Um, those slides have been covered. Obviously, what I didn't want to do was annotate the actual master score with all of that writing, because very quickly you're going to know that information and therefore it would be actually annoying to have to have that on your printed score. So that information is there for you to follow. What you might want to do is on your own score, and this is a good thing to be doing, is to write in the breath points based upon this on your own copy of the score. So actually it's quite nice to go through your breath points. If there are, there's only one point in this where there is a, not a breath point, there was a little red arrow, where there's not a breath point where you might think there would be one, and that's the only point where you might need to do that ninja breathing. Um, but everything else, you've got really two bars before a breath. There's very little issues with breathing in this song. Okay. There's lots of other issues, but breathing is not one of the things that we should be having issues with. Okay. So if I just quickly go through here at the beginning, all of you can sing the tune. So even if you are a soprano, when you're not singing harmony, you can 100% sing the melody. And tenors, you can 100% sing that melody. In the octave, it is written. So there is not going to be the ability to sing this tune down an octave. This is simply just because, as much as I love you tenors, um, although I suppose if you sang the alto part down, it would be a bass part. The problem is, and I've listened, I've I tried this the other day, it doesn't sound as light and beautiful and glistening even if you try hard, if you sing that tune an octave down. It sounds, I don't like it. So the answer is no. So I know that there's always a question of, can we sing the tune an octave down? No. Um, but you can sing it in the octave that's written. Okay, don't hurt your voices though. If you are a, if you are a low down bass, singing the alto part in this may be a little bit of a stretch. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing. Sopranos, you can sing the melody at any time you're not singing the tune. So can you tenors, as long as you can hit those notes. I mean, I can hit those notes <clears throat> mostly. Probably not at the moment though. Uh, obviously, we have our standard breath points. Um, it, there's a lot of hard consonants at the end of lines. Try to wait to pr pr to be going to that. Um, consonant. So, so for example, in the beat winter, frosty wind may moan. Don't necessarily turn to the N too quickly. So we don't want like frosty wind may moan and like kind of play with it. Again, just stick on your first vowel for as long as you can and really maximise that. It's not, it's not even slightly barbershoppy this, but if there's one thing barbershop taught me, it's singing to the end of like a bar or a phrase. And this is the case here. And again, the guide tracks are quite um, a kind of where we're going with that. The guide tracks are quite extended phrases. There's not huge amounts of um, gaps, really. Uh, so if I just go on to the next one, um, the guide track does not have the dynamics I want on snow on snow and then quieter on the repeat of snow on snow. It's the way to the, the it's the way the guide tracks are recorded. I actually sang it a little bit quieter, but because I've then compressed the tracks to make them loud enough, there is very little dynamic contrast in the tracks. OK, I want you all to give dynamics. So you build the volume a little bit on snow and fall and snow on snow. And then we're a lot quieter on the little echo of snow on snow, okay? Um, uh, but, 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 yeah, when we come in, the first bit, you'll be excited, sopranos and tenors, to be coming in on your little harmonies. Um, so it's loud, but it's not very loud. And I certainly want it to be bright. I don't want it, I want it to kind of cut through, but I want it to be smiley and bright as opposed to hit you over the head with a hammer now that kind of the, you know, you've come in, it's like, you know, oh God, it's like, no, not, not quite that. Just a little bit more calm, a little bit bright. It's a little bit of volume, but not huge amounts. So we are kind of proclaiming this, okay? Um, moving uh, on from there, 
uh, the, there is quite a lot of suspensions in here. So those suspensions where you've got a chord and then there's movement down usually. Suspensions usually move down. I'm not sure if they ever move up, but suspensions usually go move down, which means that if you are the tune, so if you're on the alto line, when you've got no earth sustain, you've got to wait a long time before you move to your N. So it's another one of those N things. You want to make sure because actually you've got this really nice double suspension move in the tenors and the sopranos and you therefore altos. Just wait until on the guide track those notes have moved down and then put a little N in. Don't turn that word too soon. Otherwise, it's going to sound a bit weird on our recordings. Okay. Um, again, when he comes to rain, okay, turn to the N late again. So when I say late, I don't mean later than you should. I just mean later than you might initially think. So um, when he comes to rain would be far too soon. When he comes to rain. And the N is like the full stop at the end of that note as you just lift it off a little bit. Um, in the beat went to a stable place sufficed again. This time, alto sopranos, wait for the tenor move. There's a little tenor suspension down. So wait, get, wait on again on that on the sufficed. Because basically it's a T sound that you get at the end of that. Wait for the tenors to hear that little tenor move before you put in your consonant. Because otherwise in our recordings, we're going to get 350 Ts that will be audible. So it suffice to ta 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 And that is definitely not what we want. Um, now, twiddles. I sang this song and I made it up off the top of my head. And then I did a score. Okay, that's how I do most of my arrangements. And I did this from uh, initially for some students at my uh, school last year. Um, and they are twiddle singers. So I added some twiddles. Uh, I have done my best to get the rhythm of the twiddles in each part as close to correct as possible. Okay, so the twiddles do matter. Okay, that you try and get them correctly. Um, they're not too problematic. But if we look there, for example, um, if we look God, if God all... You see there, there's differences in rhythm. Sopranos going up, Lord, God, all, straight down from God to all, where God, God, all, all. You've got quite a lot of bounces, God, all. You've got that kind of stuff going on. Whereas actually then the tenors, God, all, my, they don't have one on the all. So just make sure you're doing your parts twiddles and not making up your own new version um, of the twiddle. Okay? Uh, so just be aware of that. It's not too difficult to sing. It's just be aware that we do want you to do what is on your guide track. It's not just a throwaway twiddle where you get to do like a Christina Aguilera style kind of vocal run over the track. Um, if we have a hundred altos attempting that, it's probably not going to sound great. Um, there is a half beat rest. It's not exactly half a beat, but it's basically what I would call a, a pause. It's a tension pause. The actual Jesus Christ, and it's not in tempo at that point. If you're trying to beat tempo, it stops for like a little bit and then the piano comes in. That's on purpose. It wasn't just because I was bad at playing the piano at the time. Okay, so that just listen out for that. You do have the plink of the piano part to bring you in in time on the angels and archangels but do keep an eye on that when we get to angels and archangels it needs to be really really quiet tender when i say airy i don't mean bad vocal quality but we have the ability to add air to our voice in a musical way okay so as opposed to <clears throat> my voice is not great today but well it's not this time of the morning so if i was to sing that little bit on its own so here, here is the <clears throat> normal singing. Angels and archangels. Standard-ish, not particularly great. Now, all you need to do is give a little bit of air and caress to that. Angels and archangels. Just a little bit, okay? It's not particularly great in my voice um, at that level. But actually for you, if you're an alto, you just give that little bit of kind of like, ooh, that little bit of like Christmas dust, that fairy dust magic to your voice. I don't want, <laughs> yeah, not like a smoker's cough or anything there, but just a little bit of maybe additional air and brightness, kind of air and brightness, yeah? Like a little crisp morning with your breath going out of your mouth as you walk out in the snow. That's kind of what I want. Um, here we get to our um, breath point, the only difficult breath point in the whole song. You have to sing four bars before you get a breath. 
I know. How mean am I? Uh, so cherubim and seraphim thronged. So there is no breath between those um, between those uh, words. Okay, cherubim and seraphim thronged. So therefore, you want to put the M on the beginning of thronged. So it'll be m mm thronged. Okay, seraphim m mm thronged. So that's where you put there. Just wait for the M. Stick it on the front of the word thronged, and you will all be fine. Um, now, I struggled on this because I ended up singing this in kind of my kind of mixed chest voice on mother, and, but I tried to control the dynamics. If you are an alto, you need to float up to only his mother. This is a tender moment of the song, not a kind of, not what comes up later, which is that kind of proclamation of volume and power. Uh, so you want to make sure that only his mother is really, there is no, if anything, you should get quieter as you go up to mother, not louder. And that takes a little bit of technique and it takes a little bit of practice. But I do not want ever suddenly, as you get higher, the volume gets louder and then suddenly like mother is too loud. Okay. Um, because if you had a newborn baby in your arms, you're not going to necessarily be kind of shouting at it. There's only one thing that's going to happen there and that is tears. And we don't want tears. Um, watch out for the S. The conductor track will give you a nice S on bliss. The uh, guide track doesn't do it particularly well. But obviously I wasn't conducting myself when I sang it. Um, that would be difficult. Uh, again, there's another little bit of twiddles on worship. the uh, be it, uh, 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 vid. So there's a little bit of twiddles. Listen out for them. You'll be fine. Um, there's a small S at the end of kiss. So do not turn to kiss altos too soon. So with a kiss, it's a little s. It's not kiss. Again, 300 of you or 400 of you or however many there might be, we do not want a huge snake at the end of that kiss. Okay, it wants to be a tender, small kiss, not like a big sloppy one. Um, so uh, we're then very loud and very happy. I say very loud. I'm still not talking a volume 10. If volume 10 is the loudest you can sing, we never ever do a volume 10 because it's never particularly nice. Uh, I can't remember who it is. Someone probably will be able to tell me, but never louder than beautiful is always something that I was told when I started singing Barbershop. Someone said it, um, but yeah, never louder than beautiful. So this still should sound beautiful, but this is like the high point of the volume in the song. The emotion of the song really builds at this point. Um, big the lyrics as well. What can I give him? Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's happy. Um, I know that the actual poem, What Can I Give Him Poor As I Am, doesn't sound happy, but the music at this point is definitely happy. It's like we already know that, we know that the punch, not the punchline, but the end point is, I love is much better than all of those gifts, yeah? If you give someone love, it is much more, it is, that is a priceless gift to give to someone, whereas your gold and your frankincense and your myrrh are, are worth money, but actually love is priceless. So that's kind of where we're getting to in this, but we're kind of, we're already getting to that happiness before we get to that line. Um, um, there's more, oh, whoops, Daisy, sorry. There is more, uh, one sec. Uh, there is, uh, did I go backwards? Uh, oh, one second. Sorry, I clicked the wrong way with my thing. Uh, yeah, you've got another suspension there. So keep an eye out for the suspension on am. Um, there's another suspension in the top and bottom parts there. So be aware of that. Keep the positive energy. I would bring a lamb. It's easy at that point to kind of let it kind of go a little bit, but actually keep the positive energy, but don't necessarily try and keep getting louder and louder and louder. Okay. Um, we wait for the tenor suspension before adding the T again. So part, we need to make sure we listen out for that tenor part moving downwards before we add our T. Um, what can I give? Again, there's a little bit of twiddling there. And actually, tenors, you get a little twiddle. Okay. Uh, tenors, especially when you get gear it of him, that is the only time in the whole song where you get that twiddle at that point in the melody. Do not do it every single time. So it's quite important that you only do the twiddle twiddles where they're written and you don't basically like the twiddle and then try to add it into every single time because actually we do more twiddles in that last verse because the last verse is the loudest and the most twiddly whereas previously we don't want to over egg the pudding so to speak um uh wait for the teas the last the last little bit on this slide is all about waiting for the teas give my heart give my heart it's always waiting for the t's really late on the t's and small on the t's 
small because there's so many people doing them that we're going to hear them anyway okay and then quiet and gentle and slowing down give my and watch uh, the conductor track the t comes after the end of the note so you actually go give my heart okay there is actually almost an audible gap don't worry there won't be because we're going to add reverb to the final kind of track so it will still be like we're in a big church so that note will still be going until we before we place the t very gently at the end of that so uh are there any um let me just stop share my screen for one second oh he says yes it doesn't look like it's oh maybe it has crashed no it hasn't crashed hooray that's good it just tried to uh uh do there oh i've been reliably informed it was john grant i thought i thought it was john grant who said never louder than beautiful so never got to meet john grant never again absolute barbershop legend but didn't get to meet him well, properly meet him. I, I met him, but I never properly spoke to him because I was scared because he was famous. Um, but that's the thing. It's interesting. There's lots of people on the music team that I hadn't really talked to either because they were barbershop famous as well. So I didn't talk to them because I'm nervous of barbershop famous people. But there you go. Um, so um, are there any questions at this point to do with that score run through that or anything that I may have missed out? Okay, and we're going to only take a couple of them, but we'll go from there. Alison Linfield, I can see you waving your hand. Yes, yeah, Simon, it's just at the very, the very end. You haven't got a, a breast point marked in the last phrase, but there is a, a definite stop between give and then my heart where you're slowing down. Oh, did I not? One second. That is probably just, that's probably an error as opposed to that I meant to. One second. Yes, my apologies. There is 100% a breath point there. So that's because um, I forgot to add the line. So yeah, there is 100% a breath. After get it if, there's a big old gap. There's a breath point and actually there's like a pause before you then do that. I will um, update my PowerPoint presentation and redo the score annotation slide, but there is definitely a breath point after give. And yeah, so basically the breath points are following the guide track so that the breath point is the guide track. So all you need to do is do what the guide track does and you will be in a good place. Thank you. Any other questions except that error on my, on my part? Cool. Okay, well, uh, I'm assuming hopefully there isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through um, looking at time here. Hmm. Yes, let's do that. Um, to work out what's best to do with our time. So we are just quickly going to share my screen and okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Fingers crossed it doesn't crash. You're still with me. That's good. Okay, so I would like to let me just Simon, it's still loading on our end, or it might just be me, but I can't see anything yet. Yes, Simon. Anyone now see we my can. screen? Now, now we can. Yeah. yeah, it did It did have a little bit of a crash there, but I think it sorted itself out. Uh... Uh, oh, am I back? Excellent. Yep. Yeah, it's having a little bit of an issue with me at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're back again. I'm hopefully you're not going to disappear again. Can you see and hear that? Okay. Now I'm. This is the soprano. Um. Oh, it's quit again. Arrgh. Yeah, I'm getting a crash at this end. It's me back again. Mm. This is the soprano, so hopefully you can hear me, if not see me. The alto is still there, but this is a soprano track, so this is just to help you sopranos out. Parts can have a go at singing. 
Build the volume on snow. And then down in volume. Light and bright. Don't breathe. Control the volume on the high notes. A little S. Twiddles. Yeah, that's the one, Laura. That's the head move we need. And enjoy yourselves, folks. Let's gather those harmonies. What can I give you? For as I am, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a Wise man's your high point. Let's do it. Wait for the tenors. Enjoy this. Nice and loud. There you go. Wait. stuff so that is our soprano part let us just work through to our i think this is tenor yes let's do exactly the same thing for our tenors oh simon your slides didn't move on that one we're still on the first few bars oh okay one second let me do a re do a re screen share and see if that sorts itself out do 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 it's just waiting to uh, bring you all back on screen. Do 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 do. Or at least it is in a second. Or has it properly crashed this time? Ooh, I don't know. Has it properly crashed? I can't see anything at the moment. So, Simon, would it help if we all turned our video off when you're? I don't doing know things? if that helps, but it it can't harm, can it? It can't harm. So, I will attempt to reshare my screen. Um, and let me know. I can't see any of you at the moment, so uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. So I'll press play. If you want to turn your camera off, it might make it work a little bit better. Uh, so I never know if that's a, an urban myth or not. But if you want to turn your camera off, it may well work with make this work. By the way, you have access again in the folders for In the Midwinter to all of these score following videos. My only apology is that when I did the videos the first time through to create them, the breath points were not in the videos when I made them so but the breath points are just the guide track so hopefully you should be all right with that here we go ten apart again altos you can definitely sing along sopranos you can as well just let me know if those 
if just give me a thumbs up I can see Yannicka if you could let me know if the screens actually move that'd be brill thank you Seraphim. Control the volume on the high notes. Well done. Little S. Twiddles. Here we go. Enjoy. Excellent, folks. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Hopefully, you uh, then are on the screen for me. Cool. Pop your videos back on, me lovelies. Okay. So, I'll just put my video back on so you can see my smiling face. Simon, can I just ask? Yes, Julia. If we are in, able to sing in the range of the alto part, but we're doing tenor as our main part, when we come, I know it's a long way off, but when we come to do the recording, do you just want us to switch from the alto to the tenor throughout or do two recordings? No, just one recording, just switch. Okay. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. the only part at those point is the tune. So really, if you yeah. want to do the tune, do the tune and then flip to your harmony parts if you can't okay. do that. Yeah, so just the one recording. We certainly don't want twice as many recordings. <laughs> <laughs> editing. I just editing. wanted to check. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, so if you can sing the tune, like do a combination of the alto and the tenor part is absolutely fine. Um, okay, folks. Now, um, at this point, we'll do a couple of questions on In the Bleak Midwinter, if needs be, before moving on to Silent Night. 
Um, I was going to go through the conductor track, uh, but there is a conductor video uh, and there is a conductor track already for In the Bleak Midwinter. Uh, but at the moment with my computer the way it's being, um, I think that probably it would be a little bit laggy. Um, and again, all the links to all these videos and all the things like that are already in the folders, but also there's YouTube playlists and those links will be launched this weekend as well. So you'll get um, those links will be there for you if you want to be looking on the move. Although if you're driving, don't watch my conducting videos. Videos. That's dangerous. So just thought I'd let you know that. Any questions at this juncture? There's one in the chat um, from Sue. No clap or counting at the start. Can we sing more than one part? So there's two questions there. Uh, there is no need to have clap or counting at the start. Uh, that's not a problem. As long as we can't really hear your backing track, um, that's fine. There's no need for a clap because it's a, a um, an audio track one. I don't think there's a need for a clap. I don't think it counts in itself, does it? So no, you don't need to. Yeah, it just starts with piano. So just sing when you're supposed to sing and we'll work it out. Um, and can you sing more than one part? Officially, yes. The way that rehearsals are running, it means that you may well not be able to... Yeah, it, it, when we have a rehearsal, there will be, if there's voice part stuff, it will be in the same session. So when sessions are on, it's an, they're all all parts sessions and you'll go into that session. So you would be able, you'd be kind of go into the soprano. But if you want to learn more of the parts and submit more than one voice part, 100%, that's absolutely fine. You might find it slightly difficult to attend those some of those rehearsals because they'll be happening at the same time. So soprano, alto and tenor for Bleak Midwinter will be running in, a, in breakout rooms in the same actual session. Uh, but there's no reason you can't watch the recordings and help yourself learn those. So yes, you can sing more than one part for any of these songs. But as is always, the mantra is, I would prefer to get one really confident recording of one part than two recordings that take the tech team a little bit longer to go through because they're a combination of the two parts you're trying to learn and not actually the one part that you could have spent your time on. So you need to self um, self assess your ability to be able to sing those parts confidently because what we don't really want is those parts that are kind of a mashup of two or three different voice parts because you've been kind of pushing yourself to try and sing more parts. So quality over quantity, but yes, you can sing more than one part. Any other questionies? Um, Corinne had her hand up, Simon. Yeah, I can't scroll, so yeah, that's fine. Corinne. Yeah, um, I think I know the answer, but bar 46, where after it's worship, the beloved, is it is beloved. It's not yes. beloved. Yeah, it's, it's beloved. beloved. Okay. Beloved. Yeah, yeah. beloved. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So go with the tracks on that one. Um, yeah. yeah, it's easier to sing. <laughs> Yeah, it would sound quite. I, I, Any time I try and sing something like "Beloved," I'd sound very northern for for the UK. Worship the beloved. It'd be, yeah, I'd sound like I was from Lancashire, and nobody wants that. <laughs> um, by the way, that was a joke against people in the UK who are from Lancashire. I love you all, honestly, I do. Yorkshire's better though. Um, so, uh, any other questions that anyone can see in the in the of people's hands? I can see Debbie Bramley. Um, hi, Simon. Um... When we sing this in church, iron is sung differently, like iron. Do yeah. you want iron? Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I always wasn't quite sure iron. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I always sat I I, I found a bit I found it a bit weird trying to sing iron. Um I, I actually at one point I giggled. Um so yeah, iron, just iron is absolutely fine. Wasn't there an advert that sang I run, 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 I run, run, run when we were children and that just makes me go straight to that? Uh, I, I I've not, I'm not. Probably there was. It might have been for Iron. <laughs> I, I, who knows? But yes, probably there was. Uh, Zoom Bobolina has her hand up. Uh, some versions of it also do thronged. Uh, are you just doing thronged? Yeah, go with the tracks. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So again, what I am saying is I am 100% not necessarily the correct pronunciation or the correct versions of words. But if we just do what the tracks do, then I think we're going to be all right. I don't think there's any massive like errors there's just choices that i made when i was originally singing it so i'm originally from <laughs> i feel your pain sharon i uh, shiron um i feel your pain um i actually quite like the norfolk accent but probably we don't want this in broad norfolk accent this song it would give it a a different uh, kind of tone uh is there any other questions that anybody can see because i can't scroll through the people at the moment but uh 
I'm assuming there isn't. We could probably go through Silent Night. Okay, so uh, there is lots of resources um, for you for you to use um, for one second. Just let me close that down uh, for you to use for all the songs. So I would say that you really want to be yeah, really want to be having a look at them, um, kind of using the stuff that's there, the, the kind of guide tracks, um, the different types of guide tracks, the different types of videos. For in the bleak midwinter, there is obviously conductor score which you want to be using. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, we're, we're, and all these re the rehearsals that we run, there's, they're going to be recorded and put in folders called rehearsal videos, I think, in each of the folders for the songs, so that if you ever can't make a rehearsal, you can watch a video of it. You can watch a video of that rehearsal and kind of keep yourself up to date. We know that for some of you, we, we are being back in kind of national lockdown and you're in your house a lot more, so you might have low time, but we also know for some of you that is not the case and you are going full-time jobs and you've still got kids to get to school and you've got all the other stuff to sort, so we're aware that the difference in time that some people have or some people don't have is a lot different than it was back in kind of April or May time when more people were were kind of at home and locked down and everything and schools were closed. So you just have to do what do what you can when you can. If you can't make a live rehearsal, we're going to record as many as we can so you can watch them. If you can make every single live rehearsal, that's brilliant. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you. Um, but at the same point, that's why we're running things slightly the way we're running them so that, you know, you can be doing different things in those sessions rather than attending 17 notes, breaths, words session when you're actually singing the melody and in the bleak midwinter, uh, which probably you're going to be able to learn relatively quickly if you haven't already. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you come out of this this rehearsal, then you say, OK, I can send my recording in. Um, <laughs> feel free. Um Excellent. So I'm just going to go on to Silent Night now, folks. If you've got a score for Silent Night, uh, we'll do a similar treatment for Silent Night. What I will ask... Oh, whoops-a-daisy. Ah! Ah! Sorry, you might not even be able to hear that. Um, I don't think you could hear that. I accidentally pressed my PowerPoint presentation and it then played the pitch note of Silent Night extremely loudly through my headphones and I didn't know what was happening. It was like a car alarm going off. Um, so what I would like Karen to do... Could you stop the recording and then we'll start it again for Silent Night so that then people can watch the two songs separately? Give me a thumbs up when you've re restarted the recording. Spot on. Superstars, the lot of you. Okay, so if you've got your score for Silent Night, we will gather a look through Silent Night. Silent Night is a different beast. It is not as easy as um, In the Bleak Midwinter, but it is shorter. And actually, with it being not with a guide track, I am a massive fan of a cappella and barbershop music, but I also love a decent guide track. Like, I, like, I like singing to instruments, instrumental accompaniment, and I love singing without instrumental accompaniment. That was one of the reasons of having these two songs, is they give you a different kind of challenge. They give you a different opportunity to do things. Uh, Silent Night is a little bit more tricksy. Um, it's got a little bit more tuning kind of things to it. So we will go through this one now. And again, there is lots of resources on this. There is not, I don't think, going to be a conductor track. And I'll explain why not in a little bit. Okay, oh, here we go. I'm just going to share my screen again. And we cross our fingers, folks, that it doesn't just randomly crash on me. And we'll go from there. Looks like hopefully you can see my screen. Still loading for us. So Simon's been kicked off, so let's give him a couple minutes and hopefully he'll jump back in. The joys of technology. I am here, I am here. Yeah. yeah, when I said it hasn't crashed, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I should not have said it hasn't crashed. So I'll just share my screen again and hopefully it will this time not crash. Yeah, excellent. That's fine. I knew my computer was in a bit of a bad mood this morning. Yeah. So let's have a little score run through. Here we go. Wait 
for that bung. So that's our first part, th first way through. And I will slightly track back for you and do a similar thing that we did before, just to kind of explain um, a little bit. Oh, whoops, Daisy, one second. I need to start on a different slide. One second. If I go back onto this now, one second, do not play automatically. Nope, cool. Otherwise it was gonna play the guide track over the top of me speaking again. Oh, and it already did. Uh, cool. Hopefully that's okay. Now, um, this one is a little bit trickier. Let's just spend a little bit of time going through. The breath points are there for you. So as they're on the screen, you can be going through these breath points um, and go through that. So first thing is, it's quite slow. It's, it's really kind of rubato. That kind of, there's very little sense of a tempo to it. Uh, it kind of, it just kind of flows. Um, so again, you just have to kind of go with that. Um, first thing, the T put it on the beginning of night. Silent tonight. So tonight is really important. You don't want, there's no gap between there, there's no breath between there. But when you look at those words, you think that you should put the T before the N, but you actually put the T on top of the N. So silent tonight is how you want to be doing that first little bit. Um, holy night is less of an issue because holy night is absolutely fine. That's no worries. All is calm goes straight into all is bright. There may well be more need for ninja breaths in this. So if you struggle with all is calm, all is bright, it looks like it's easy because it's four bars, but because it's so slow, it's quite a while. It takes quite a bit of breath control, especially if you're trying to do this beautifully and quietly and that sort of stuff. It actually takes a little bit more energy and air to sing kind of high-ish notes with beauty and with kind of quietness. It takes a little bit more energy to do that. Um, the bung, wait for the bung. I've not written the bung in, uh, but the bung is in the alto two part and the tenor two part. They have a little move that goes bung, okay? You gotta wait for that, listen for that, listen out for it, and we'll go through that in a bit. Uh, there's really the round yon ver urgin. Uh, there's some really tricky tuning for some parts. Okay, really tricky tuning, but when it's done right, it sounds gorgeous. Okay, um, so just be aware that there is some tricky tuning. Um, you want to be listening to those guide tracks. The guide tracks have what we want you to do. Um, but again, some of these things you probably don't want to be singing through the entire song. You want to be practicing the tricky sections, like go to the tricky section, go through it, be back in track, back to that point, go through it again go through it again, really nail those tricky bits. Some of the parts flow really easily, they make sense. Some don't make sense, but they sound gorgeous. So just be aware of that. Um, now here on child, late on the diphthong, but melt the chocolate. Now that's a visual image I want you to use uh, because that child is melting chocolate. It's just a beautiful chord. Again, I didn't arrange this. So by the, I didn't arrange this so I can say how beautiful it is rather than praising my arrangement because it's not by me. Child is a gorgeous chord. You really want to enjoy that, but enjoy it on the R. It's like char, like a cup of char. Yeah, char is the kind of sound you're aiming for. And it's child. And the turn of the diphthong, that end of that note, child, that little end part is as small as it can be at the end of that. So you really just want to, and there's actually a little bit of air on that sound. Whoops-a-daisy. Um, 
Yes, one sec. Uh, so there's a little bit of air, okay, on that, um, on that cha sound. Just enjoy it and then turn it late. Um, infant, again, is not the same as last time. I've put a breath in between. So if we look previously, we get ver, er, jin is all in one breath. When we get to the similar kind of bit here, it's not the same. I don't know if the notes are the same. I don't actually think they are, but certainly there's a breath point in the middle of it. So it is not the same. So treat it differently. Um, yeah, so it definitely is a different way of treating it. There is a nice breath after infant. And again, mild is a real kind of chord squeeze. Enjoy that chord squeeze. Kind of like really revel in that kind of crispy, crunchy, kind of mild chord. It The word is mild, but I would describe that as a spicy chord. Okay, that is like spicy salsa, not mild salsa. So the, the word is mild, but it is a spicy, beautiful chord. So enjoy that squeeze. Um, sopranos on that high E. Okay, I can barely sing that high E. Oops, a daisy. Uh, I can barely sing it, okay, because I'm a 39-year-old man who isn't a soprano, uh, but I can re I struggle on that note to sing it at all. Um, but please, can we make sure we're not too loud? So what we don't want is sleep in her, and then like a, re like a really loud thing to try and get that note. Do your best to be floaty and to try and make it sound heavenly. Um, Heavenly is definitely what we're after there. Also, make sure that heaven li, li the low, you note you sing sopranos on li should be the same volume as the note you sing on he. So that's your idea, is that the, the volume of those three notes should be basically the same. Okay, that is going to be a challenge, I'm aware, but that is our, my challenge to you. Um, be aware that this is quite a biggish phrase. Um, alto 2, there's an out lovely alto 2 move, but everybody wait for it. The S of peace comes really, really late. So don't be worried. So for you, if you're a, if you're a baritone, you're on peace. And it's a really late, small S. Uh, and then when we get to sleep in heavenly, we get a decent breath. Now there is a change, and I haven't written it down because that's what we're here for. But here, the alto one and the tenors, the actual P comes in from all the other parts, and then you actually sing heavenly peace. So it's it's actual words in the alto one, um, the alto one and the tenor part. You get that actually you don't do that note at the same time. So you hear the peace, and then it's heavenly peace. Now that isn't anything I've done. Stuart did say, uh, Stuart Sides, whose arrangement this is, did say that's a thing that he changed afterwards that he did with his group. So I, I listened, I kind of did both versions and thought, no, I like the heavenly peace at the end rather than P-E-E-E. -E -E. It sounded nicer to me. So there is a heavenly peace for the alto ones and the tenors at the end of that. Well, that tenor ones and tenor twos because they split. Tenor, one, tenor ones go up, tenor twos go down. Okay, and the S, like the last song, the S comes after the note has finished. This is as much for musicality, but it's also to try and control where we put the S so we don't get too many of them because we all want these S's to be beautiful and not the last thing we hear in this song. We don't want it to be like an out of control boa constrictor. Um, so that's what we do not want. So um, we have videos for this. Okay, we have videos. And actually, um, the video for this um, is going to be more useful um, than the conductor. So the guide track video with the coloured boxes that we use is going to be much more useful. I tried to do a conductor track for this song and it didn't work. It didn't work because a conductor usually is supposed to direct the singers. In a song like this, when the singing's already done, singing directing the conductor is the wrong way around so actually it was really hard to do a decent i just ended up sitting there with my hands in the air shrugging because it was very difficult to conduct something that's already been sung in a certain kind of way the guide tracks that we're going to go through now and we'll do it for all parts so it'll take a little while but i just want you to get the experience of this and also following these colored boxes that should show you where to breathe. It should show you what the notes are. It should especially show you if you are a tenor one or tenor two or whatever, where your parts split across and do different things. Um, so this is what we're hoping is that these should be, instead of a conductor video, conductor track I don't think would work in this song um, for the reasons specified. So let's try and sing it through again with our colored boxes. Now, bass is red, 
um the uh, sub, uh the tenor is in green um the um leads you are in do i call them leads or sopranos sopranos isn't it soprano so sopranos are green altos are blue um um tenors are yellow and then basses are red there is parts where you've got different colors that's when the tenor ones and alto ones and twos and stuff like that split off so but you should be able to kind of yeah go with it here we go let's have a listen let's have a sing if the video's slightly laggy it isn't in real life so we'll be okay so one second i'm just i was just stopping my video Is that video moving, Laura? Kind of. our bung Altos and tenors, heavenly. Okay, so you can probably see that. And by the way, in real life, those videos are obviously not laggy. So they're actually, I made sure that the play bar that's moving along is actually in time with the track that's in time with the, the video. Um, that should actually be a lot more helpful than a conductor track because once you've learnt your words, okay, uh, and this, by the way, is in English, once you've learnt your words in English, uh, you'll be able to then just sing those notes by following the bars and again going through that. There are videos for this for each individual part okay for each individual part um i'm gonna i'm sorry sopranos i'm gonna skip yours because you are the tune so obviously the tune is the tune and i love you very much but we don't necessarily need to go through the tune now but it is there for you um and that's fine i am actually gonna do the alto one video and just so you can kind of see if you're an alto one you will notice that your part is now nice and big and blue so you can see your part col more colorful and brighter than anything else and also what's playing in the background is your specific alto one guide track so if when you're learning this song you probably want to use the videos as much as you can so we're just going to go through this video if you're an alto one go with it if you're a soprano or any other part see if you can follow your lines and this is a really useful thing to check your knowledge of this piece because if you can sing while watching your boxes but while hearing someone else's guide tracks then you are 100 percent doing very very well so let me just play this give me a thumb up laura if it moves and if you can hear it Fingers crossed it doesn't lag.
kind of s the s kind of dies away okay and that's again on purpose so the s is very small but it does have a little bit more length to it so rather than p it's kind of just a little kind of almost like a little very quiet wave just slightly going off it's still small but it's a little bit more in keeping with that style of the music um to have like a, a slightly smaller but slightly more kind of s at the end okay and if needs be we can always lower the volume slightly if there's a little little bit too loud now um i'm going to apologize to alto twos i'm going to skip your video but only because it's very similar to the alto one part with only a couple of differences so um you can have a look at that what i am going to do is i'm going to play the tenor one video okay so we can have a look at the tenor one video uh julia has her hand up um is it just me? I don't understand what you mean by the wait for the bung. I don't know what the bung is. Is it the tide note or? Yes, it's on the tracks. It, the, the, it's not written as a word, again, because it was an addition um, after the score right. was done. But on the actual score in the alto two and the tenor two, um, yeah. there is a physical word. In fact, let's go for the tenor two. And so you can then hear the bung in the tenor two part. So we'll play I the tenor two part. I hadn't heard it. Sorry, I just I didn't know if it was just me. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll have no, a listen I didn't to the know tenor. either. Yeah, it's on the track. It's in the video. So we'll have a listen to the tenor two part and you'll hear that bung and you'll actually see it. So you actually get a breath point before it. So you can visually see where that plans in. So tenor twos, it was not me that gave you the color pink. It was my uh, it was my uh, my music software that gave you the color pink. I am not commenting on anything to do with tenor twos, although pink is one of my favorite colors. Pink and purple are my favorite colors, I think. But uh, there we go. Let's have a look at this. Let me know if you can hear it and see it and all that stuff. Awesome, good stuff. the bum. breath control there. So hopefully we could see that kind of the bung there. And again, the, vis the visual video guide track is quite useful there because you can see the breath point uh, and you can then pop on that bung. Um, again, it just kind of, it's supposed to be quiet. So the bung's supposed to be really quiet. So it's a really quite quiet B. It's kind of bung. It's just very quiet. It just gives a little bit of a pulse and a little bit of a rhythm to that phrase. Again, I didn't do this. It was something that uh, the arranger put in there slightly after the fact. Last thing we're going to do is have a look at the bass part. So then I'm aware that I haven't played all of them, but again, you, the videos are there for you to use. They're going to be on they're on YouTube already, uh, which will share the links. And also you've got the ability to download these from the folders so you can be practicing while watching with your part. So I'm just going to put the bass part. Basses, you're in red. 
Again, no comment, it's just the way that the software um, was running at the time. So let's have a listen to the bass part. Again, um, soprano, see if you can be singing your tune over the top. Um, we'll go from there. Fingers crossed it still works. Proper bass part. So Silent Night is a it's a different animal, so to speak, than than in the bleak midwinter. It gives you um, a hopefully a really nice contrast. I'll just put my um, video back on. It gives you a really nice contrast, okay? Because you've got in the bleak midwinter, which is almost like it's not quite bombastic, but it, it, it's a different kind of style. It's kind of got the kind of it's in tempo. It kind of gets kind of it's quite smiley. It's kind of quite engaging and it has some quiet moments, but it's different. Silent Night is just that really really nice kind of contemporary choral kind of a cappella style of crunchy chords and 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 yeah, I, I absolutely love that arrangement. So um, the video guide tracks, hopefully you're seeing, are really really useful, really really useful for your learning. Um, so really, once you learn the words, I would encourage you to be really looking at those guide tracks, really, really checking them out. Um, you do on the um, guide tracks have obviously all of the kind of the different parts and stuff like that. But those videos should actually really, really help you. And hopefully you can see why having me conducting would actually possibly be off putting because I would not be able to do all those timings as clearly as those colored boxes can and actually hopefully you'll you'll agree that the the tracks themselves i'm relatively happy with the emotional kind of the, the kind of phrasing and the musicality of the tracks so again it's one of those go with the tracks um kind of things um and i think we should be all right now do we have any questions on um on that zoom borbelina has her hand up i've got a question and i've got a observation yes um, the but the bung, I think if you're like me and Nicola and Donna and Lim Palmiter, if you're not careful, are going to be going bung because we're northern. Maybe we take the vowel out and just make it bung is possibly just a thought. Uh, opposite way, I'd say. If anything, you want to, uh, for, for me, I would say I slightly posh myself up when I sing that. I kind of, I'm almost bung. Bar, uh -huh. ah, it's that. It's kind of like, bong, bong, ba, 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 ba. It's ever so, bong. Yeah, it's a little bit through the nose almost. It's just that kind of bong. It's that kind of lifted kind of. Imagine you're a little bit posh. Um, I know that might take that might you know be a stretch for you, Debbie. Um, but uh, but imagine you are and just kind of bong, 
bong, bong, yeah. bong. Yeah, just kind of do it through the nose. But again, possibly a little bit of a singable consonant N in there would be useful. But yeah, certainly don't northernify up and like, bong, is definitely not what we want. So it's really, it basically is like um, a muted bell. So if you imagine like a bell, but actually that's kind of like muted and in, in, a, in a duvet, uh, it's that kind of muted kind of thing. It shouldn't be too percussive and it definitely should not stick out. So uh, it needs to be a really soft B um, and yeah, it should be nice and quiet. Now, um, language versions. I'm going to cover this um, now. So language versions of Silent Night. What we're going to do is the first verse of this. So as the music is going to be done, as that version does it okay then what we're going to get you to do separately from that and in rehearsals you'll be rehearsing this everybody but sopranos okay uh, because sopranos you're not allowed to do this and i'll come to what you might be able to do instead um, is going to also then sing the notes and you can follow your colored boxes if you want just to an ooh just a really simple like soft ooh so um if I was a bass, I would literally just be going, ooh, 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 just the nice oohs. And it's actually something we might well do in sessions as like warm ups and, and as we're running through it on an ooh, because what we're going to do with the different language versions is the language versions will only be singing the tune. Okay, and yes, you can drop the tune down an octave for those of you who are singing the different language versions, because obviously not all of us are sopranos. Okay, um, all the other harmonies are still going to be there, but you're all going to put in a record, a separate recording, just with those oohs. And each time we have a new um, um, different language being sung, you'll be sending that in separately. Those of you who want. Two. So the information I put on the members video the other day about Silent Night was that at the moment we're looking like we've got maybe 10, 11 different languages. There'll be sessions on 11 different languages to teach you the first verse of Silent Night in these various languages. Um, you do not have to do all 11. You may, you can own again, you do what you can. So obviously there are, there are native singers in those languages. Obviously, if there's a, a session in German and German is your native language, obviously it's not going to be as particularly difficult for you to sing the song in your native language. It was written in that language. So that we're fine with that. Um, but again, same with like Swedish. If you are Swedish, it's not going to be difficult for you. For some of us, though, might like to learn it in that language, but you don't have to. So we, anybody who puts in recordings in different languages, we will be putting those together and we'll be putting them over the ooze. OK, it may well be that um, yeah, if you choose to do a language, it is only the soprano part. So it's just the melody. This is partly to do with the movement of the harmony parts, because obviously the harmony is written. The harmonies were put in, thought that the, the phrasing of it is thought to do with the English version. So actually the ooze are just basically like uh, just that little accompaniment to our different languages and actually just singing the tune. So you're just singing the melody part um, in your different languages. Karen has her hand. You did say that the melody part could be sung an octave down in yes. the foreign language, or yes. sorry, the other language. Yes, in the other language, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, it can be, basically, you're just singing the tune in whatever octave. Now, myself and Tanya, I think it was, listened through to this the other day. I don't think basses, you need to sing it two octaves down, because that would be unbelievably low. So I think basses and tenors, if you're a male bass or a male kind of choral tenor, you'll be fine with Silent Night a one octave down. Um, I would also, if you are a, like an uber soprano, please don't attempt to sing the actual melody an octave higher. That would also be an interesting decision because that means you'd be singing uh, an E above a top soprano C, which would be interesting to listen to. Possibly you might struggle with volume control at that point if you're hitting uh, that note. Um, I'm not sure if there's as many people in the world who could hit that note in, in, in full, but I'm sure I could find some. Uh, but yeah, so all you're going to be doing for then is French is indeed one of the languages. At the moment, um, we have, oh, there's lots. There's German, French, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Finnish, Swedish. Um, um, someone help me out. Um, French. Or Irish, Irish, Welsh, Welsh. 
Uh, and there's also Hawaiian. So there's, yeah, so there's quite a lot, shall we say. Um, now, again, singers can do as many or as little as they like. They will all be recorded. So there's only going to be one session um, on each of these languages, okay? Um, but they'll be recorded. So the idea of those sessions is it won't be teaching the harmony parts. It will literally be teaching the pronunciation of the words, assuming that everybody knows the tune. So literally you come, you turn up to that rehearsal, a native speaker in that language will be running through how to say the words. Okay. It may be that the translation isn't actually the words have been changed. In, because sometimes the word silent night, holy night, might not actually work in that language, and that's absolutely fine. But for those native speakers will be taking that session, making sure that those of you who are in there can try and say say the pronunciation as correctly as you can. Uh, Karen? Just a question in the thread. Um, yeah. if, if a Japanese version could be found, would you like that as well? Yes. Yeah, again, they, basically there's any 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 versions we can run sessions on really any language um and what we'll do is if enough people submit a recording in that language so i'd say more than like maybe 10 people or more on on submit a recording in that then we can fit it in now what we'll need to do is it may be that for example japanese if if then there's a japanese verse and that's brilliant um it may be that we can't fit the entire verse in every language if we end up with 15 languages we'd have to have with we're not going to have silent night with 15 verses because at that point the entire christmas show is going to be a 90 minute version of silent night in 20 different languages what we may end up doing is um having you just record the whole verse and then as editors we would then basically pick half a verse in that language and have half a verse of french followed by the half a verse in german half a verse half a verse so that we don't end up with a 25 minute version of silent night as lovely as that would be um we probably would time wise possibly struggle when we get to the 25th language and the 25th verse we might at that point be kind of a little bit um yes i'm not sure it'd be great for the audience uh but yeah so there's as many languages as you want and then um uh, the languages, as far as breath points are concerned, you would probably, yeah, you'd probably still want to be following the timing of the original track. So therefore, the timing of the original track still needs to be followed. Otherwise, it's going to be all over the place and we won't be able to use it. So you'll be basically singing in the different language. Now, I will, I haven't done it yet, I will do those three parts and I will do an OO guide track to be used. I just haven't done it yet. So I will do an OO guide track that fits exactly the same timing and breath points as the normal version. I just haven't got round to doing that yet. It's on my list of things to do. That will not have the soprano part. So sopranos, if you either don't put in an OO part in the soprano part, or you put in an OO part in a different part that you normally sing. Okay, so sopranos, we don't want soprano OOs because obviously an oo on a soprano line when somebody's singing it in Portuguese is going to make the Portuguese not be heard as well. And we just want like that version to just be the, the, the language as the melody, the other harmony parts in the background. Any other questions? Kath Tyler has her yeah, hand up. Just, just a quickie on, on, the, on the soprano part. If, if I want to do maybe just a couple of languages, um, I can't hit that top E. Yeah. Um, but I, I can probably hit most of the rest. You know, the rest of it just will be fine. Can I just take ninja an ninja that breath? One? Of course you can. Yeah. 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 Cool. It, again, Great. it's exactly the same. If you are if you are lower, but there's some of those bottom bass notes that you struggle with a little bit, just miss them out. Just just literally. Yeah, Thanks. exactly. That be just miss out. If there's any notes that are too high, if it mainly you suit the bass part, but that low notes too low, that's perfectly fine. This goes for any of the songs. Um, if you need to miss a note out because it's too low or too high, miss it out. Have a breath come back in that's absolutely fine um, as you would if we were a live choir i'd be saying exactly the same thing pick the voice part that suits your voice the best if it doesn't perfectly suit it miss any notes out that are going to cause you issues on the bottom or the top not a problem at all and yes you can sing as many languages as you like um, you can submit as many of the languages that are the official languages you're running this song in which are the sessions that are running but yeah you can do as many as you like there is no limit on that any other questions? Um, 
we'll have a look through. I th I've I've gained back my my go through screen thing. Uh, no, I don't think we do. Now, folks. Oh, Jenny Slee, was that your hand waving? Or were you waving bye to someone? Waving bye to Julia. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's no worries. I, I wasn't sure. I thought it would look more like a wave than a question, but I didn't want to ignore you. And then you think I was being mean. Simon, if you need anything other than milk, let me know, because I'll be popping to the shops a bit later on. Oh, excellent. I'll send you a message. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so, um, thanks. See you later, Julia. Now, um, the last thing is, you can sing as many parts as you like for any of the songs. And that, again, is Silent Night in the Bleak Midwinter. I'm going to be honest, though. Can be very honest. I would prefer, this is just me, that, for example, you've got five songs. Okay? You've got five songs that you can take part in. What we, what I don't want is that, for example, you end up doing all three parts for In the Bleak Midwinter, but then not actually learning one of the other five songs, which, and then if enough people do that, we're then going to get not very many people singing those songs, and they're not going to sound as good, if that makes sense. Okay? So you can 100% sing more than one part, but if you have the ability to be singing multiple parts in one song, I would urge you to possibly use your time to make sure you're trying to do as many of the songs in one part before you then go into doing multiple parts for those songs, if that, if that makes sense. Only I'm thinking when we get to a performance, I don't want to get to like the Christmas song, for example, Chestnuts Roasting, and there's like six people on screen and we haven't got one of the parts. Um, I'm not necessarily thinking that's going to happen. But that probably would be a shame because the people who then have learned that and the various stuff like that would then kind of be like, oh, people didn't learn the song I did. So, yeah, so that would be my only thought. You can do as many parts as you like, but do try and do as many of the songs as you can. But again, there is no necessity to do all five of them if you can't, mem if you can't manage that. Uh, so, folks, um, Karen, you can stop recording now because I finished on Silent Night. It is stopped. Oh, is it? Someone else is still recording. Oh, maybe I'm still recording. Oh, yes, I'm still recording. I didn't even mean to be, but there I was. Uh, now, folks, um, that is our launch session. Now, if you are wanting to... Now, every launch session is covering the same information. However, launch sessions that are run by different people, you can guarantee that they're going to be slightly different. OK, you are perfectly fine to attend more than one, but you actually don't need to because it's literally going to be running through the songs in the same kind of way. But if you want to pop on later, if you've got or you look at the music, you've got any additional questions or anything, that's 100 percent fine. But the 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 aim is that the launch sessions um, are going to be the same for this for this song. So in the bleak midwinter, silent night, the nine o'clock session this evening um, will be basically very similar to what we've just done now but obviously the only difference is that after it there's going to be a social event so you can 100% rock up to kind of go through and you might just treat it as a rehearsal as it's going through the different parts you can get your music and you can be singing through and running through but there's going to be no additional information given out in those launch sessions obviously we've got launch sessions for oh manu mysterium the christmas song there's only one launch session for happy christmas war is over which is tomorrow at 8 p.m so i would urge you if you can to make that that um launch session um that's the only one we've got for happy christmas war is over happy christmas war is over is going to be our finale song so again that's one that again in order of priority for collective singers in the bleak midwinter silent night Happy Christmas War is over, and then Manu Mysterium and Christmas Song are on number, are kind of fourth and fifth on that list of priorities. Happy Christmas War is over is our, our kind of finale, so we'd love you to learn that. And again, it's it's not too tricky, so we've tried to get a nice a nice simple one to finish us off with for our for our concert. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we'll look forward to seeing some of you later on in uh, the different songs that we're going to be launching this weekend. Uh, the sessions start, I think, next Tuesday. Uh, there might be one on the Monday, but we're currently putting the sessions in. They will uh, there. Some of them are already on the app, but there will be more of them going on the app. Um, and again, there'll be information about how those sessions are running. But really, the sessions are running as all parts sessions where you will go in and therefore there'll be a number of music team in that session who will be able to then take you off into breakout rooms. In the first week, we're only working on In the Bleak Midwinter. 
from week two we're working on silent night and in the bleak midwinter and all the other three songs uh and yeah so the information that's on the members page and that's been sent out and it will be on youtube as well gives you an idea of the timetable the members information video takes you through what we're doing when we're doing it and obviously keep an eye on the app for your sessions uh and again we're all really the team are really really looking forward to seeing you uh if you haven't seen the app yet it is super super christmasy uh it even has fireworks on it so that when you click anything on the screen it sets off a little quiet firework that then explodes on the screen in wonderful mag magical mystery so it's beautiful so uh thank you ian for the app um and hopefully this session has been a useful kickstart to this song uh, and it's great to see so many of your beautiful faces. Thank you for those of you in different countries who got up extremely early to be here. Uh, Kath, you have your hand up. Yeah, just to say tonight, I, I probably won't come to do the repeat of this session, but I would probably quite fancy coming along for a bit of a bop later. Yeah. What time would be a good time to come? Uh, the that? session itself starts at nine. And I think that with the second time through, I think I'd probably be able to be slightly quicker than I was this morning, uh, today. So I would say that probably from about, 10 o'clock probably would okay. be imagine i think i can cover okay. the launch session for this in an hour if i'm quick enough great thanks awesome. very much so, yeah socials thanks. from 10 ish thanks. so you might just have to sit through the last bit of silent night but, oh no, yeah, no, be fine. no worries about that <laughs> so folks thank you so so much is there any questions before we finish this session uh it has been much appreciated to see you um so um yeah so hopefully you're all good. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook, as I know some of you were, that is awesome. Uh, we will try with launch sessions to go on. Um, but we're certain with sessions I'm doing, I'll try and be going on to Facebook and stuff. There is no guarantee that every session will be able to go on Facebook. But as we can do things, we will do things. Uh, and certainly uh, if it's worked, it will be a useful thing to keep on doing, uh, especially in case we ever have more than 100 people in a session. That means that nobody misses out. They can still maybe watch that. Uh, from there, Karen. Uh, yes, uh, off kind of off point. It's to do with Happy Christmas War is over. There was a question in the thread that Laura and I gave two different answers to. Um, it's about right. doing. Um, it can members do the their the the whole song of their part and the solo part as their second choice no. of part. No, the solo part is not um a part that anybody can sing. The solo part has already been um, moved out to. Um, various choruses and things that I mentioned. So it, that would be two separate parts if you are in a chorus. So if, for example, you are in the chorus Dutch Pride, who is doing like a couple of the bars, all I need from Dutch Pride is their two bars of tune. I don't need the entire song in the tune because I'm only going to be using that little section. So actually, that's all they need to do. Does that answer the question possibly? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the solo line, it's not like there's any auditions. All I've all I've done was um, asked if people would like to do that with choruses. I don't know if I have any space for additionals um, um, because obviously there's only so many. I've already well, otherwise I'm only giving people like I end up giving one note, um, which is probably not very not very worth their time. Uh, but yeah, so we do have the choruses there. Again, if and when we do other songs that feature kind of solo lines, the, obviously we want to involve more choruses. And again, if your chorus didn't get kind of a, a spot or whatever in this song doesn't mean that there's future songs coming up where you can't do a similar thing um but yeah so yeah so no the solo line is not for um putting normal tracks in if if an individual from not from those choruses put a track a solo track in it wouldn't be able to be included um because obviously they're not in those um in those choruses excellent well, let Christmas commence, folks. Hopefully you're feeling festive. Uh, make Again, it's uh, November the 5th is gone. So really off the bonfire night in the UK, Christmas really does begin. So I've got my Christmas playlist all ready to start going. I'm probably going to start off with Last Christmas by Wham, uh, because that's my favourite. I think Last Christmas by Wham is better than All I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah Carey. If you disagree, fight me. Um, so yeah, that's my choice. Uh, but maybe it's just because... George Michael. I, how can you say no to George Michael? Man was a genius. Um, so, yeah. So, it's been awesome to see you folks. Really looking forward to Christmas. Uh, having some fun. Obviously, the UK has gone back into national lockdown. Um, and again, that is not a great thing. Um, not sorry, all England, UK. England, England. Sorry. England has gone into national lockdown. Uh, obviously, Scotland has not. Well done, Scotland. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, so obviously we are looking forward to kind of doing what we can with Christmas, having the best Christmas we can possibly manage. Um, we know that for lots of you in different countries, you're in different states of lockdown or restrictions and all those things. But again, hopefully you're as well as you can be in the situation. Uh, and we're really looking forward to try and give, you, give us all something to kind of enjoy through the Christmas period, knowing that, again, things are going to be different this year. Uh, even if you're in a, in a country that has less restrictions, it's still not going to be exactly the same as usual. Uh, so we're hoping to give you something to smile about on the 23rd of December, 7 p.m. UK time, uh, when we uh, look at our Christmas concert and that goes live. It'll be lovely sitting down for a glass of something uh, mulled, probably, uh, with a mince pie and all knowing that there's hundreds of people or possibly thousands of people around the world watching the concert at exactly the same time. So it's going to be fabulous, folks. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you possibly later on today. See you later. Bye. Bye 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 bye. Bye 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 bye. Gonna wave until 52 people have left. Gonna wave until 250 people have left.